So when I won the World Cup on Curlin, he won the next year. We're well on. Uh, well on. The horse I beat the year before. He was sitting oh, there man. perched up there. Wow. <laughs> this is this is <laughs> no, the real play. Yeah, Blue Bible and Red. Right. And the next year he won the next Aaron year. Aaron Grider, Robbie Alvarado. This is a blessing, man, to meet these guys this morning. Wow. We got to get something sure from you, man. Actually, I'm coming back to run a horse for a trainer, Kenny McPhee. I work for him now. Okay. I run horses. I, I, and I'm coming to run a horse in a state race that I won last year as a, on Swiss Skydiver. Oh, the Beholder right. Mile. I won the Beholder Mile here last year on a Swiss Skydiver, and I'm coming back this year to run a horse in there. Yeah. So if she wins, I'll be assistant trainer or whatever you want to call it. What's my favorite moment of racing? Oh, it'd have to be my last big race I won, Swiss Skydiver, when I beat Authentic in the Preakness last year, two years ago. That was big. Yeah, that was big. That was big. And I beat Johnny Velasquez. It took me 13 years to get him back because he beat me in the Belmont on Rags to Riches and I was on Curlin. So I beat him on a Philly this time, so it was nice. Tell us a little something about your Curlin days. Curlin days are awesome, man. They were really nice. We try not to take that for granted, you know, because you always try to find another horse like him and they you never do. You never do. He was a monster. He was a monster. He was a monster. You know, at the end, he knew it too. He knew he was a monster. Wow. What, what an athlete he was. Very dominating. Tell us a little bit about the derby. Like, what, 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 what happened? He, he wins that derby. He... Well, I, you know, the race before, the Arkansas Derby, he broke and he was in my hands. He was pulling. He was got a little tough. So, in uh, the Kentucky Derby, I just broke and I sat on him, which is a big mistake. I should have rolled him away from there a little bit better, harder, get a little more position. Yet I found myself so far back. And I was. I wish I could have that one back. If any race I could have back in my career, it'd be that derby with Curl. He finished third that day, yeah. the Street Sense, and, and uh, hard spun. Then I beat Street Sense, and the Preen is the next start, so I wrote him a little different that day. And you know, can you tell us something that you never said on camera before that racing fans will kind of enjoy to hear coming from you? Well, I said this on NBC Sports one time. He asked me, what's something that people don't know about being a jockey in racing? I tell them, I said, when we're all lined up in the gates, when the last horse loads, there's two or three seconds in between, and it's quiet, very, very quiet, because we know we're about to break, and all you can feel is their, the horse's heart pumping. You can feel their heart beating through you. Mm. Like two or three seconds is quiet. You, all you can feel is their heart beating. That's pretty wild. Wow. And, and you know, right, how special is, 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 is the people that work on the back stretch, man? They're the, they're the backbone of all the success. They're the wings. They're the wings back there. They make it happen. They make it happen. And, 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 and you we know, take the credit for they make it happen. Real players inside the backstretch. Okay. Look them up. All right, brother. Good to meet y'all, fellas. Yes, sir.